The Dogs of War Cry is a podcast from the Mortal Realms focusing on War Cry, a fast paced cinematic skirmish game by Games Workshop. You can expect discussions of gameplay, rules, homebrew, lore, painting, terrain, narrative, gaming, leagues, and events. In episode two of season six, we will be discussing demos for dummies, creating lasting experiences for new players in your group along the way. We'll talk about our hobby progress and games we've played. My name is Eric, and answering the call with me this week is Josh. Oh, yeah. And Vint. Hi, how's it going? How are you guys doing? Great. Doing well. Pretty good. How about you? Good. Summer is done. Kids are back in school. There's a little more rhyme to the reason. Uh, uh, I know, Josh, you've got, you've got one off back off to college. Right. Uh, so yep. you've got a little more space in your house right now. Yep. Exactly. Um, Vint, uh, you do not have anybody going to school, but how is it feeling for you and your sphere? Is it is is your uh, community changed with the coming of the fall? Uh, yeah, I mean, the coffee shop has a huge amount of turnover being so close to campus. So mm. um, it's been cool. Uh, I'm getting to meet a lot of new people. Um, all, all of the new people seem to be open to Warhammer, which is the important thing. <laughs> <laughs> new hires means new uh, gaming converts. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we're actually looking at running uh, paint night, I think, either next week or the week after, and then we're going to do another game night in two weeks after that. So Awesome. You know That's you don't awesome. work at Games Workshop anymore, right? I, I do. I do. But, you know, <laughs> the more the merrier. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <All right>. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, it's glad we're glad to be back for episode two. I know we had a little bit of a break from episode one we put that one out because of the starter set and we've been meaning to to jump on this one uh sooner but like i said the back to school stuff august was a little bit nuts yeah things yep. are are smoothing out and we've got a lot of stuff coming up but feels like pretty quick so um we're gonna get this episode uh recorded it's something we want to talk about for a while uh uh doing demos uh and doing it the right way there's only one possible way to do it and we're going to tell you about it right right here on this <laughs> podcast uh but before we do that why don't we get through the slog of amazing hobby that we uh oh, get yes. uh, the opportunity to do on the regular um yeah. uh, the forge Josh, of mithraxis exactly take us, take us there you always want to know what's on the forge and we're pounding those hammers hot we'll start with you eric what have you been up Ooh. to in the last month and a half or so since our last oh. record yeah, well, uh, I've been uh, doing a little bit of building uh, with Miles, my son. Uh, uh, building some ogres, Maw Tribe. Um, and he's, uh, he's been playing Ogre Maw Ma Tribe with some of my models, and he wanted some of his own so he could model them his way. Uh, and he's had uh, some really good playing a gut board, but using it for one of my other ogres. I always had his own gut board. So nice. He's, he's asking me to paint it up, so we'll, we'll get to that next. Um, and then, uh, a little bit of just trying to, as usual, a little bit of how, like you got the tail end of a project here or tail end of a project there that you're just like trying to make a little bit incremental progress on, but nothing super exciting at the moment. So, all right. All right. Yeah. Well, that's good. Progress is progress. Yeah. Vance, what have you been working on, man? Uh, I got the cities of Sigmar box set. I've been cranking through those models. They are really, really cool. But they're very, very precise. So if you have like a little bit of a mold line, it'll make a big bit of a problem real fast. Gotcha. Um, and if you over uh, like shave or over like uh, clean up your model, or you're a little aggressive with the mold line remover, then you have gaps. And it really happens in like the space of a heartbeat. So Dang. it's been a, a very intense but beautiful building uh, thing to do, be working on. Um, I've got about... Uh, I've got the horses left from the Cities of Sigmar box and one group of steel helms left. Uh, and I'm about two horses in on the horses. So I'm not like completely out, out of shape on the horses. Uh, and then I'm also doing my last 10 Karakakalites, I think is what I've got in the box. And the last uh, 10 Zangors. 
Um, so for the years each, all things said and done, uh, my list, at some point I should get it to you guys, but it's over 10,000 points. I think it's probably clear wow. of 12,000 points as each over the last year. Wow. wow. So if anybody who well, is joining us for season five, where we introduce the year of Zinch, we're in season six, but it's still the, the year of Zinch. Uh, it, yeah, it's a new season for, for Dogs of Warcry, but it is a never ending season for Vint. The Zinch is always there. <laughs> we only have to go till November, and then the season, the year of Zinch is over. Turn thirty-seven, we're done. All right. And then what year will it be? <laughs> There's nothing. There's nothing. We're not doing another year. Right? Right. Right. Get it once. I'm done. Not committing yeah. nothing. There are 120 Karak acolytes, and almost half of them are painted. That all are just they're there, man. They've had their year. They can hang right. out for a minute. Right. Oh, Nobody man. will put Vinti in a corner again. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, it's hilarious. How about well, you, Josh? Uh, I haven't done a whole lot. Uh, I did some more painting on that. Um, the uh, the starter box terrain that I've got. Did some oil washes, did some highlighting and some other stuff. I've still got, I've got to do some of the ultra highlights yet. But I like how it's kind of coming along. So, um, but that's the main thing I did. I had some vacations, some family vi family visits, and haven't had a whole lot of hopping, unfortunately. But well, now that uh, Ben's off in college again, I've been working on reorganizing the office. So I've got some painting space there. So that's been fun uh, activity as well. So kind of making a dedicated desk for paints and getting some shelves in my art books and stuff. So that, that's been my creative outlet lately. So nice, nice. Yeah. It is. It's always nice to have kind of a, a new space to be able to like take a minute, lay it all out. Yeah, so exactly. Can't can't wait to see it. We'll have to see if I can snag myself an invite to see the new cool new place. <laughs> oh, I've got to finish straighten it out first. Mm -hmm. uh. Maybe that's the, that's the incentive. <laughs> We're gonna come have a, a whole uh, hobby room housewarming party. <laughs> I like it. We gotta have you guys over for games, regardless. But you know. heck yeah, cool, cool, cool. All right, so you you ready to move on? Let's go. All right, let's get to the path to glory. Uh, we're gonna talk about what warbands and quests we've been playing. Um, uh, Vint, how's how's the gaming been in your space? Uh, still doing some of the uh, boarding action games at the at the coffee shop. Um, but also doing um, a lot of 40K games. Um, sat down. I've got it hashed out. I'm going to try and get a couple practice games because I'm going to uh, Salty Sea's Gnarl Goose Chase uh, with maybe somebody else on this podcast uh, on the 30th. <laughs> it's going to be super cool. I can't wait to go to the Gnarled Goose Spruce Moose Double Deuce. Uh, Heck yeah. Up in the, the North Moose part of the state. Um, <laughs> no, it should be a lot of fun, uh, and I think I've got it nailed down. It's uh, my goal is to to catch as many geese as I can. We all know what menaces they are to society, but uh, yeah, a lot right. of forty k stuff set. Uh, I've got all my marines painted at this point, nice. um, and I know on the last podcast I was working through it, but they're all painted now, mm -hmm. uh, so everything's ready uh, to go. So whatever the new codex drops there uh, in the next few weeks, I'm ready to go. Uh, I've it. done a bunch of narrative gaming there um, with them, so uh, the story goes on of the brave mortifactors and the rebuilding of their chapter. Awesome. That's fun. Nice. Josh, how about you? Um, I was trying to recall, and I think I did get a game in two weeks ago with Zach, and I brought in my Chaos Legionnaires, just, you know, straight from the box, you know, nothing, no extra uh, models, and um, played against uh, Zach's uh, Hunters of Huanchi, but he had two allies in it. He had the, uh, you know, Karhadran chemist, you know, the fumigation. And uh, then he used that, uh, you know, fight for profit buff quite a bit. Then he also had the Skink Priest special hero guy. And I, his name is completely slipping. TC Kaka or something like that. Yeah. Tixi Kaka. Okay. Yeah. So nasty game. He had tons of models. Yeah, I think something like that, something like that. <laughs> but uh, so I didn't end up winning, but it was close. I made him work pretty hard for it. But, uh, yeah. but it was it was a fun game. There was lots of uh, interesting shenanigans, especially with his uh, buffing his shooting aura. Even those little blow darts can spears will get you. <laughs> yes, 
yes. Uh, All right. How yeah. about you, Eric? I have uh, I have gotten to play a few games. Um, I did play against uh, Zach last week as well. I'm trying to remember what he played. Um, he was playing. He was J. Was it J. No, it wasn't J. Dobelisk. He had a few different things. It was kind of a mis- mix mash of things. Um, gotcha. And I was playing with uh, Zinch Demons because I'm trying out a Weird Lights list, and so just wanted to see what it played like. And it was interesting because uh, I, you know, the major feature of that uh, Warband is the splitting mechanic. But I found it kind of hard to accomplish. I was often uh, maybe I didn't have enough activations in order to like put myself in a position to be attacked while having actions left to be able to split. So gotcha. thing, things like that, where it's it's positioning and, and being in the right place. Um, so I need to figure that out a little bit more. However, then uh, yesterday I played a couple of games with my um, my uh, dwarves, uh, my uh, cog ribdis and how many dwarves? Five, six, seven dwarves. So, uh, if only Cog Ribdis' name was Snow White. Um, <laughs> uh, so, played that against uh, one game against um, OBR and uh, was able to, it was an objective based game, um, was able to, to um, get that taken, taken, taken for a win. And then I played against um, uh, Mike's. Um, Spire Tyrant list that he's cooking, and uh, we only got through three rounds because the store was closing. And uh, uh, despite what he he might say, I was definitely going to win that one for sure. <laughs> no, can't prove otherwise. Um, and then yeah, so uh, as Vince said, I'm also going to be heading up to uh, Minnesota to the Salty Seas uh, Goose. What do we call it? The Gnarled the double deuce goose. spruce moose. <laughs> the, well, if you're looking for it on Best Coast pairing, don't search for that. Uh, search for <laughs> search for gnarled goose chase. Uh, it's September 30th, uh, which is a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you can register through Best Coast pr- pairing, and all the information is on there. Download the pack and have some fun. Uh, I'm going to be bringing my son who has uh, notoriously went up against Dan in, in one of our local events. And uh, when faced with an ogre versus one of his um, rat fiends, storm fiends, uh, Miles asked, uh, which one's your favorite? Uh, and then proceeded to kill that one first. So he's a bit, <laughs> he's a bit, a bit rowdy, I guess, on the table. <laughs> We're going to see if we can take him to a place where there's more people. <laughs> diversify his yeah, experiences yeah. <laughs> yeah. so we could talk to perfect strangers that way uh so, anyway. so looking forward to that and that's but that's all the games i've been able to play uh this august was not great for playing games uh oh. as we've mentioned but i won't belabor it it's been nice to get back into the swing of it exactly yeah soon all right then uh into then. the visions of madness we go uh, this is where we do our announcements and our speculation. Um, the 2023-2024 roadmap is out. We've got the starter set, which was Crypt of Blood. We talked about that a bit on our last podcast. Um, we've got Autumn. We've got the uh, Order versus Destruction. We've got Wild Corp Hunters uh, versus the Gorgers, the hunt, and the Hunter and the Hunted uh, mm-hmm. coming out soon. Uh, the yeah. box is awesome. What did you guys think about the Hunter and Hunted box as a, as an offering? Uh we talked about what we thought they might be doing, if they're going to bring them out as pairs, if they're going to put them on a box set, put a book with it, all that kind of stuff. How are you feeling mm-hmm. about it? Man, the terrain with the the cool models has just been so fun. Um, and getting new models for Gorgers that have been like, they were prevalent in when Age of Sigmar launched. Having them have new kits is very exciting. Um, mm-hmm. And I hope to see them on the table for all sorts of different games. Yeah, no, no, it's uh, it's nice to kind of see, like we had speculated a little bit. Okay, well, what are, what is this next season's offering is going to look like? But now we know. Now we know it's like a box set, two war bands, a book, and a smaller piece of terrain. So it's smaller in size than we had in the box set releases last year, but I still think quite a good bargain. And, and again, the models are great. 
you know, the, the, the cities of Sigmar scouts look fun. And there's, you know, again, more animals to throw into the mix. <laughs> Dogs running everywhere with that one. And uh, yeah, the, the little maw pit should be pretty fun to see on the board and check out what it can do. It'll be fun. Yeah, I can't wait to throw somebody into it. I'm sure that's yeah, a rule. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, I was not expecting such a unique piece. Um, I mean, we've gotten some uh, that are, you know, very cool pieces. Uh, this, I mean, it's it's right up there with the ziggurat and the bone hole and that sort of thing. But, right. I mean, for for ogre players, for Maw Tribe players, um, that's a really sweet uh, piece of terrain to add to add to the mix. Agreed. Um, and it's a really cool pairing. I mean, I, when we saw the gorgers, uh, that's a dream come true again for for as a as an ogre player. You know, having a fine cast, um, you know, gorger for the last you know twenty years or whatever. Um, There's probably metal before that, right? Um, <laughs> these guys are they look amazing. Um, and and they really fit the vibe. They could yeah. you could play them as cryptors if you wanted to use them in the cryptors uh, stuff. Uh, I'm sure there's nothing stopping you, but uh, but they got the maw stuff on it, you know. Oh yeah. Um, so that's really cool. They're, I yeah. just think they they fit the vibe, a hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. All right. Um, what do you guys think of the Vulcan Flame Seekers and the Monster Killers Cruel Boys? when they were showing those with the preview at Nova uh, and through the community articles for the, um, for the new fire slayers that they've got clothes on. I, I know. <laughs> I know. And they look great. Plot twist. Yeah, I know. They're, they're, you know, they're kind of like kilts, but I think it's a great addition actually. And it probably make it more appealing to a wide variety of audiences, but, uh, and also there's like a couple female models in there too. So, which is a good mix. Yeah. I I really liked the the styling um, using instead of beards using long braids uh, as kind of the motif for for the the women, um, uh, yeah. Just a, and, and I do like that they have just a, a different set of armor and clothing and just uh, go a little bit you know just take a little twist on it and that's I think it's really cool. I think yeah. it's going to spice up the the range as a whole and mm -hmm. uh, could be an interesting direction if they they include any of that stuff in future fire slayer releases and yeah yep let's get the baby magma dwarf so again pets oh, cute little baby magma dwarf i know it's so a dual touch it's adorable <laughs> is he though or is he gonna get caught monkeying around i know by that <laughs> baboon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. we all know that angry baboon's coming for him he's gonna swing <laughs> off the top rope go for the elbow drop <laughs> Squishing magma droths and dreams of fire slayers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I'm no, kind of wondering when that box set will come out. So, if, you know, if we're expecting Hunter and Hunted sometime this fall, I'm guessing October, November, then, um, then the next set, you know, if it's supposed to be in the fall, I'm guessing we get it late November, December. Yeah, could assume. be, could be into January. I'm trying to remember when we had our second. Maybe, yeah, we have a second here, box set by uh, by Christmas of last year. Yeah, because they say the winter two new war bands, water versus death. Okay. So I guess winter could be maybe that's sure. that would be January, February, March. Because then they have yeah. again two war bands for spring. That would be March, April, May. So you know, so I guess we'll find out. But yeah. So, yes. um, both cool duos. Yes. Very cool stuff. And I uh, would, I guess we could assume that there'd be some terrain that comes with, I mean, some of the photos that we've seen have mm -hmm. uh, like uh, stone arches or partial circles and some platforms that look like they're more like splayed out uh, bamboo uh, yeah. flats instead of, you know, bamboo all in a line. It's all kind of like spoked. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really cool. I'm unless assuming. that's, yeah, assuming unless that's studio terrain, but right. I yeah. think it'll be interesting to see what they do if they put them in a box together. Is the train feature going to be for uh, the Fire Slayers or will it be for the Cruel Boys? Uh, right now, the Orcs don't really have a terrain piece that I can recall. So having something that would be kind of cool for the Orcs to have, right? Yeah. The Ogres have their, their Maw Pot, which is pretty slick. 
I like that yeah. model a lot, but I think it'd be really neat to give orcs some kind of terrain. That'd be kind of cool. Or even if it's just cruel boys, um, they're a cool new line and the, the models look awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and they look like it's a very uh, techie looking group, right? Cause you have archers, you have, uh, I think you've got like a bunch of different stuff in that unit or, or in the box. And from the previews, it looks like it'll be a lot of fun and probably a lot of variability, which will be cool. Nice. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So moving on, we've got uh, a couple white dwarfs to talk about. Josh, do you want to talk about number four ninety one? Four ninety one, yeah. So they had some. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I like it. You're a poet, and you didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> it has a lot of additional stuff for the Quester Soul Sworn and the Royal Beast Flares. Some new quests, new artifacts with heroic traits, and a you know. And then encampment, and I can't remember if this encampment was in the the book. I forgot to check that today. But you know, the one's a Dongbringer encampment, and the other one is is a Royal Beef Beast Flayers encampment, where they're like seeking out the dragon, really. But it's um retrieve the heirloom. It's okay. Let's see what the name of it is. Oh, going back and forth here. Uh, hunting encampment. And then they also included the rules for the. Uh, the Rump Shaper engine and the in the White Dwarf. So um so I I didn't check to see if all of the artifacts and things are new. It sounds like when I was talking with Eric a little earlier that maybe some of the artifacts are similar, but some of them are different. But um but they have a lot of good stuff in here. The flavor again is great. And uh, of course they have the background tables for both factions. So you get all sorts of fun names and, and the origins and, and stuff like that to go with the models. So a lot of really cool content in there. I really enjoyed it, and you know, especially reading some of the heroic traits where it's night of this and other things like that, really fitting the theme of models. It's great. Very cool. And we jump into 492, and we have the word hollow bladeborne rules, bum, bum, bum. Um, which is super cool because we get Ephlums Pandemonium, uh, and Ephlums another one of the Gaunt Summoners. Um, he's or she has been in the story a couple times throughout uh, the Broken Realms where she's appeared and kind of done something and disappeared again. Um, thought to be dead, here she is, back again from the realms <laughs> of the Underworlds. Um, the models are fantastic. I don't know if you guys have gotten to see those, but they look yeah amazing, yeah. both sides. Uh, cast some magic with their feet. Yep, yep. all sorts yep. of goofy stuff. The eye and... Uh, it, they were really fun to play in Underworlds when I got to play against them. Um, right. And they look just as fun to play here. Uh, you've got some good abilities, um, a lot of a lot of strong models, and a lot of kind of goofy models with the way they work. So Yeah. So, <laughs> so with, this whole, with this whole dead, not dead, does that mean that uh, FLM is back to F with them? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. She's, she's causing pandemonium. Around those oh, parts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's not to overshadow the light of the Storm Coven, Domitons Storm Coven. Um, they're they're a bunch of wizards, Harry, uh, and it's it's kind of cool. They run around and they all have their their wizardy attacks. Um, lots of cool abilities. They're a strong a strong group that you could ally in. Honestly, I think with just about any order guys, and it would be it'd be cool. Um, but another good group of, of, uh, Stormcast to put into the rest of it. So, hmm. nice. uh, then of course, after it, you've got, uh, the headsman's curse, uh, and scrab, sh scabix plague pack. So you've yeah. got some Skaven in there. Uh, not they that the Eerves each will end only to be launching into, uh, you know, probably close to a year of Skaven. Anyway, not going to say it's only going to be a year of Skaven because, We've done that. Um, <laughs> done that for many some years. furry stuff in there, though. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking there will be some fun Skaven uh, stuff coming down the pipes. Um, and these models, again, look really fun. Uh, and I was actually pretty impressed with, like, the Headsman's Curse models. Um, Night Haunt are, you know, their cloaks and robes and arms and weapons, right? There's, there's normally not a lot to them. These models and these kits are really well done, and they lend to whatever you hope to make the ghost look like. Like, does he have the cool black cloak, or is he, you know, covered in ancient leather or whatever he is, or they are? 
Um, and they're just fun. All the kits are pretty cool for that one too. I've always, I've always wanted uh, to get um, a small group of them and paint them like they've got like um, burlap sacks on. Like, yeah, it's um, <laughs> a lot of hats. Super, super, yeah, super raggedy and. <laughs> Maybe get some gauze and just glue it on there. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheesecloth. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's they're super neat. Um, you do, yeah. They do have, again, we could go through all the rules, but uh, realistically, like, they're just really neat, and they're good options for you to include in your already built warbands, or building a warband based off of them is also really, really it's, it's nice. Uh, Aflum, they're... I think, is the scariest yeah, yeah. in the book so far. And then I think you also have the Stormcast characters that are wizards and fighters that have always been kind of awesome to see on the table. But I really think that this like dials them up. Like, this is my named character version, and she's even scarier. Like, right. It's kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool that they're putting the, the uh, Underworlds models back in the Mike Dwarfs again. That's awesome. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're still missing some, but, you know. Hopefully they'll eventually get those. Well, tests. there's a there's a whole new uh, set coming out eventually. They announced, right? Was it called? Um, it's oh, the the icy place, right? Yeah, is it like a gorge? Something. Um, gorge. Let me see if I can find out. We luck out. The what the death heck? Gorge. Won't make, oh, death gorge. Death gorge. We knew it all the time. What the heck? We listen. We were there. <laughs> <laughs> so me. gonna listen to all of them yeah. but that means there's some more uh bladeborne coming uh let us know do you use bladeborne on the regular are you always kind of peeking over there at the uh different bladeboard options to see if there's something that fits your warband or do you stay away from them because once you get one you got to get them all let us know. gotta catch them yeah. all I know, such fun stuff. <laughs> and with that, we will move on to our favorite category, the Circle of Paint Challenge. Mm. Our dear listeners, last time you may recall, we had some discussion, and eventually we decided upon the challenge of doing treasure tokens. Since they're no longer passable, cannot stay on them, rather. You can. Uh, we figured we'd do thematic treasure tokens, and we decided on six and I did print out uh, six treasure tokens that are identical in size to the standard one, and everybody has them now. So the challenge is on. Yeah. And guys, I'll start with you, Eric. What are you thinking? Of? You don't have to share any. Uh, you know, if you don't want to give anything away, that's fine. But thoughts? No, no. You know? I think I think you got to get out ahead. You got to share, spill the beans, <laughs> and then if anybody else does what you're doing, then they're a copycat. See? Okay, that's, that's fair. how it works. Uh, okay. So I got to go first. What I no no sorry I got the mic I got the mic uh, no <laughs> so I had mentioned that I have some like supply crates you know they're forty k supply crates but they work for me they work really good for my cog port turns out they're just too big they're too big I'd have to like prop them all up on their end and like you can only do that a couple of times for, before it looks dumb uh, so uh, I've decided to go a different route and I'm still sticking with the cog fort but I'm kind of um, uh, going to be putting together um, different different bibs and bobs from there. So, like one is going to be like an exploded vent uh, that's you know like uh, that you know a geothermal vent that they've placed in the ground and it's been chopped up and they've got to repair it. Or um, uh, another might be a crate of some sort, but smaller that can fit on the on the space. Uh, one is a, a telescope, I think, from the old. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Huracanum, uh, or right. something like that. So, I've got a few things like that that I've been waiting for the right, the right thing. Um, Fun, uh, I like and, it. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what else ends up on those. Uh, All right. All those right, tokens. Then. Vint, how about you? Um, I have some ideas. Uh, <laughs> But they're all mysterious. No, I, I don't <laughs> quite know yet what I want to do. I have some ideas, um, and some of them are, are highlighting uh, some catacombs, because, right, they've got to work down there, too, uh, seeing as I, I do love me some catacombs games. Um, but I think I think I've got some cool ideas, and I've got some extra extra stuff floating around from similar kids to you, Eric. So now I'm, now I'm all like, Oh boy, I better change that up. <laughs> yeah. No celestial <laughs> hurricane for me. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do have some ideas, uh, you know, and things that all war bands would want, right? Like, I feel like if I made a stack of books, it'd be a really cool objective token. And nine out of ten armies would be like, ah, yes, the hidden books of... Um, but I could see, like, a Cruel Boys or a Skaven group being like, ah, why do we need these books? To destroy them. Yeah, wipe, we don't, we don't need read. <laughs> they need toilet paper in the swamp. I guess. <laughs> Burn them so that the, uh, you know... Uh, they pick them up and run around all these books. They're like, ah, knowledge. <laughs> or they um, light them on fire and throw them at people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so trying to make them very much more neutral and putting mm -hmm. bits from different kits on there. Uh, I think I'm going to do one that should be fairly tall, and it should be pretty interesting. So we'll see if I can get Ooh. that done. Um It'll it'll have a resounding impact. <laughs> nice, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I've been uh, kind of going with the approach of uh, generic items as well. What would you know? What might be out in there in the Narwood that all factions might want to get? And uh, I haven't really started building anything yet. Been checking my bits and stuff. But one idea is taking one of those uh, little Narwood tree bits and then hanging like magical fruit on them. So mm. if you like some kind of unique tree that's growing in the Narwood sure. that the people have to come after. Uh, another one might be a floating crystal that I've you know, toyed with. And I've got I've got a 3D printed crystal that should fit, but um, but I've also I've got you know I've made jewelry in the past, and I also have actual quartz crystals. And I'm like, well, would that be cheating if I just <laughs> don't have to paint it up? You know, what would no, you guys think in that respect? It's up for the people to decide. You, I, you, I think you you gamble if you're not painting it yourself to see if people. But if it's in a, an assortment of things, I don't think everything needs to be painted okay. that's fair that's fair okay and um but yeah but i've also thought you know maybe a magic weapon you know obviously finding that everybody would like something like that so you know pile of supplies backpacks and then you know, other stuff like that so yeah i'm still looking for bits and certain things too but yeah but definitely going to do the tree with the fruit i think that'll be a lot of fun nice All right. and, and did we want to try and set like we had talked about maybe trying to get one done a week or a one per podcast period. Are we going to shoot for that? Or are we going to go like one a month? Do we want to set a timeline like that or no? Mm. I mean, I think we could set a deadline overall. I'm happy to do that. Sure. Um, sure. And because I don't want anybody to feel like they're, they're uh, <laughs> giving away all this time, but everybody knows when they're due and nobody yeah. has to feel like they're rushing it. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Get it done next week, happens. Vint. Okay. Okay. We will discuss it then, and then we'll come up with a, a hardcore deadline so yeah. that the listeners will know. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Sweet. Excellent. So, good luck. I wish you all the best. I want to play with great objectives, regardless of who made them. Exactly. exactly. Fun is the objective. Hey, that's a, that's a great segue into our victory condition. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> As I mentioned at the top of the episode, we're going to be talking about running demos for Warcry. Uh, in the final uh, episode of Season 5, we talked about growing your Warcry community. <clears throat> and we really think that one of the prerequisites of, of introducing people to the game and pulling them in, into the community is being able to run uh, killer demos. Uh and if you've uh, ever run a demo or had a demo run for you, you might recognize some of what we say. Maybe there's some things here that you do. Maybe there's some new tips, uh, things you were like, oh, I never thought about it that way. Or, uh, you know, um, something that could help turn around something that you do. And we'll try and give some reason behind what, why we think those things are, are the case. Um, and if you have some ideas, things that we didn't mention, ways that you run it, please leave comments uh, uh uh, yeah. You can leave comments. You can email us at uh, dogsofwarcry at gmail.com. But you may be watching this right now on YouTube, and you can leave comments uh, down below. So just a little snuck that in there that this is on uh, audio podcast and on YouTube. All right. I wanted to start this conversation out with a little bit of, of kind of each of us reflecting back into our gaming history 
Uh, what are some of, and, and I don't necessarily looking at your, at the details of it, but what were some amazing experiences that you've had getting demos of different games? And what are some terrible experiences that you've had? You know, we can, and we can, you can go either direction, share one of each. Uh, Vint, you've run a, a heck of a ton of demos, uh, even probably before Warcry, but maybe you've been playing Warcry since the womb. I, I, you could tell me that, and I wouldn't argue. I would not. I would believe it. I lost the catacombs game, and now I'm here. Uh, <laughs> Careful what you bet. Yeah, right. Honestly, um, yeah. So when it comes to demos, I think. Uh, so the worst demo I had was actually this year at Adepticon. Uh, I went and I talked to one of the games that I didn't know how to play there, and I was very interested because it's a very much a passion of mine outside of Warhammer. Um, and sometimes I try and drag Josh into doing stuff like this in Warhammer. But not to call anybody out, the demo was rough because when I asked about it and they had it set up, I was like, hey, could you give me a demo quick or just kind of walk me through how this works? The answer was... And then they went back to talking amongst themselves. And I think that's the worst demo, is wow. the demo that doesn't happen, right? Uh, I went back the next day to try and do much the same thing. And they said, here's a rule book. The game's wow. pretty advanced. I think you'll be, and I, I, I was always wearing my Tundra gear or what, my Dogs of War Cry shirt or whatever. And so I was very clearly a Warhammer player. But that was, uh, those were both, it was the same, same game, same booth was really really rough and like right money in my pocket and a will to buy i like walked away and found other things to do um mm -hmm. so it was just really uh really really kind of a down moment right yeah. um and there's definitely ways to avoid that i mean right like be patient be understanding be kind there's lots of best practices and we'll get into all those but that was i think my worst demo experience um I've, I've heard those stories. I've heard those horror stories. Yeah, we went in to ask about something and the, the staff blew us off. But when you're at a convention, especially, like you're there with your friends. I had brought people both times to have them show us how to do the game and yeah, it didn't yeah. work. Um, <laughs> Presumably so we then, didn't sell it, you know, right? <laughs> well, I mean, right? The, the reality is, is that I was like, I was curious about the game. Now I'm not. So yeah. now I'm going to go find this other cool thing to do. Um, so my positive story, uh, there have been a couple times where I've had, I know it'll be shocking, Warhammer demo to me, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> a hobby that some of us partake in, you know, it's, it's, no, it's super fun. Um, I remember Tony Koval when I, when they first opened up the Warhammer store here in Fitchburg, um, when I walked in, he was nice. He was approachable, all the right things. Right. But he sat down and we had in 10 minutes. I was worried about how long the game would take, how expensive it would be, all this stuff. He just like smashed through it. And we went right to the demo table and we played right away. And my, uh, my corn berserkers destroyed wholesale some uh, mighty, mighty Stormcast Eternals. But uh, I know chaos, no way. I can never believe it. Um, <laughs> right out of the gate. But that game, that really turned me on to Age of Sigmar. And then it opened up all the doors that Age of Sigmar opened up, and that was right when it had launched, right? It was the first yeah. the first iteration of Age of Sigmar. They didn't even have any old world stuff except the books in the store. It was just brand new Age of Sigmar store launch. Boom, it's all here right now. And it was super cool, and I got really into the story and the lore and all the, the models and, uh, you know, the beer hammer. I played that the next, like, three or four years before I even started going to, like, anything organized. It was all very, very fun, and it wouldn't have happened without that demo where in 15 minutes or less we played a, a, a full game of Warhammer um, where I got to see the actions and see the causation and see the dice mechanic, which was really terrifying until you sit down and do it, and you're like, wow, this is pretty simple. Like, I don't have to add or subtract really anything unless I really wanted to. So <laughs> it was super fun. How about you, Josh? Um, I don't know if I've had like a really a bad demo. I'm trying to re recall, but I've had a lot of good demos, you know. And uh, at Adepticon, I I demoed Fallout, Wasteland Warfare, and Elder Scrolls, and they made them really kind of simple, easy to use mechanics. You know, they didn't delve into a lot of the rules. Kind of told you what you need to roll in and why. 
and and set it up very narratively. So they were a blast, and, and I thought it's definitely a more receptive way to play. You know, like you said, get into the action, get a taste of the lore. You know, and, and I'm familiar with the background of both. I played games, you know, both of those for for many years. So you know, it was like you said, it was something you're already interested in. How does this game actually work? Okay, oh, it's fun. And um, you know, and I've had demos for other games too that you know just kind of get a little taste of how the flavor works, like Conquest. You know, they'll usually do a pretty good job. Sit down, you can play with some skirmish style or more larger Warhammer War game sized armies. So I, th I think people are pretty good as long as you got to just keeping it simple, keeping it fun and fast. Then those you get a flavor for it, but you're not there too long and feel like it's dragging on. I think those have been like the key highlights and then the narrative yeah. bits to lower the hooks. Got to yeah. get you in. Um, my worst demos. Uh, were in Warhammer Fantasy Battle, uh, and and that was partially because I you know kind of bought in. I built an army, read the books, and then I came to the store to get my first game in. My opponent took it as an opportunity to put it another notch on his belt, uh, you know, and and get the win. So it was it was a little defeating. It was like I was immediately thrust into you know, okay, I'm I'm just going in the deep end with you know great generals, quote unquote uh across the table um and then you know i had another one um i guess the other ones have sort of been like when um when the end times for warhammer fantasy battle started there was uh kind of some new magic stuff and different books would come out and they'd introduce new mechanics or you know new you know winds of magic and just it was crazy it was like and so they let you kind of put that on the table and uh, I played with somebody who was in, in our local group and, and he gr <laughs> went through the first magic phase of the first round, did not like how it went and picked up his toys and went home. And it wow. was just like a, a, a not like not having an open mind and not being like, again, open to the experience as opposed to, you know, focused on trying to win a game or have some something in particular happen. Uh, uh, and so just some, some pretty neg like those are very negative to me in terms of trying to get introduced to a game and feeling like it was a high cost. Like there was such a high stakes on whether or not the game goes well or not. Um, probably the best, um, demo, two best demos. One was, um, local group was trying to get a Mordheim campaign going mm -hmm. and they're so excited and man, you got to really work to get people to play Mordheim because it, it does have kind of a high barrier of rules and stuff like that. But they walked me through it. We played some games. It was, it was like no pressure. Let's just see what the mechanics are. You know, once I was in it, there was no holds barred, you know, um, but there was just a lot of joy and excitement going into it. Uh, mm -hmm. and then the other was, uh, the, when age of Sigmar came out, um, uh, host of what the heck, uh, Davey, uh, and, uh, I cracked open the box and we played through the initial kind of missions that they, they set out. And it was a great introduction to the themes and the flavors and, you know, us working it out. Cause neither of us had an idea of what the rules were and how it was going to work. And so it was, that was a really interesting to me, a great way to demo a game. And, and I, I, kind of get jealous of anybody who's jumping into war cry or other games for the first time because i think josh we probably had a similar experience you mean pavin mm -hmm. war cry came out as opening the box and being like how do we play this game what do we do like a cooperative right like, learning demo for each other yeah. learning together right um so uh yeah so those are some of my experiences and i you know uh josh i'm glad you haven't had any negatives um, Vint, I feel for you when people are just not open-minded, not interested in uh, in kind of the outcome, what it could mean for a, a good demo, a healthy demo to take place in front of them, and what it could mean for like the next game and the next game and the next game. So why don't we why don't we take a step back and I think you know we've we all probably have some some similar ideas, probably some different ideas too. Uh, what is the objective of a demo? What is the main purpose of the demo for you? What do you think is most important? Uh, for me, I think the the biggest thing is it's got to be fun, it's got to be memorable, and it's got to be fast. Good. Mm -hmm. Those are good. 
You did that really quick. Nice job, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need a drink. <laughs> um, no, I think, I mean, and I can go into it more, but like, I think that's if in the shortest way possible. It needs to be memorable, right? Uh, I, I've demoed a ton of games. I couldn't tell you over half of them because it was like, and then we rolled some dice and then all the tanks are dead. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but then there's other games, right? Like Age of Sigmar demo or like sit down and do a 40k narrative game with a buddy and it's their first game even if it's not me doing the demo it should be fun for both of us because we'll both have more fun if we're both having more fun right? right if we're both having fun so like eric when when you gave your examples of the bad time you were ready to have fun you're like i'm gonna do the fun thing and yeah. then the other person you was guys like know me Don't i'm you. fun <laughs> Yeah, pull pulled the rug right out from under you. And that's difficult. Like, how are you supposed yeah. to have fun when your opponent picks up his toys, tells you it's a bad game, and walks away after you bought all these things? You know? <laughs> our hobby isn't as expensive as others. Uh, our hobby is fun. And we get a great staying power with many of our models. And many of the joy, much of the joy of it comes from the hobby side. But you yep. should still be able to get to play your games. And that's just really, like, that's heartbreaking, right? Like, the person just picked up his stuff and was like, Cool, bro. Glad you spent the money. Bye. <laughs> like, yep. Yep. Thanks for yep. keeping our hobby alive, so I can quit games before the first turn. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Josh, what 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 do you, what do you hold up the highest when it comes to running a demo? Uh, I think definitely fun. You know, so kind of making it a more narrative twist. I think you know is is fun for a lot of people. Um, and I, I like to kind of go through, try to hit at least all the mechanics at least once even if we're not spending a lot of detail into it and go, oh, okay, this is how climbing might work. Uh, you know, what they climb or something like that, or this is how attacking works or, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, but again, I think um, fast is good, you know, not, not a full length game necessarily. And, um, you know, just so they get a flavor for it and, and get an idea of like, okay, well, this is kind of fun. Well, you know, what happens after this? Well, well, you know, you can, there's this, you know, the league, you know, there's a narrative part where your characters advance over time. You get artifacts and you can search for things that kind of add a little bit of those in terms of the what's more, what's out there beyond just the, the core mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. I think, I think fun is important. I don't want anybody to ever feel dumb playing a for, game for the first time, right? Like, it can there's a lot of things in this world that can make us feel dumb and a game should not be <laughs> that thing uh and so uh like should don't make it you know i don't want anybody to run into a, a rule and feel like they got it wrong and feel bad about it so uh mm -hmm. i always you know that and then yeah that that the, the that the tone of the game comes across like that they get an experience of the game but i also agree like it needs to be fast it needs to be quick it needs to feel light um, I think the particular game has a lot to say about that, right? Different games, probably you can't get the total feel for it if you go too light. Um, but yeah. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure many games, even complex ones have, you know, a light mode that you start with and then you, you move into it. Right. I mean, infinity is one of those that's notoriously complex and heavy, but I'm sure that there's some, a light mode of that, that, uh, that you could play to get somebody into it and not feel too cumbersome. Um, and I think, to me, I think wanting a second game, like, do they want to play again? Um, you know, do they want to re-rack? Do they want to, uh, you know, put more models on the table uh, next time or something like that? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, we've got some objectives. We want people to have fun. We want them to, we, we think good demos are, are quick. So, why don't we break that down into some of the mechanics or some of the the like put a frame around it and build kind of what we think some good demos could look like. And I was kidding when I said there's one right answer for demos. You knew <laughs> I was kidding. I hope that, I hope you knew I was kidding. God, please, please. I was kidding. Keep, okay. <laughs> but we've run a lot of demos between the, the three of us. Uh, and, and, and so these are, uh, we don't, I haven't done all of these. Some there's ideas I've had here that I'm like, Ooh, I wish I was doing that in some demos. Uh, so thanks for sharing those. Um, but what, when it comes to demos and should we should pull it tighter into war cry now, um, for running a demo of war cry, uh, what are some, th what are the physical things that we need to make sure we have 
on the table. Catacombs yeah. board. Um, <laughs> uh, I think one of the coolest things about Warcry is the terrain and how the levels and things matter. Uh, have a board that looks cool. It doesn't have to be functionally metric and perfect and even and synergistic and all that. No, it just needs to look really cool. Um, so painted terrain and enough of it that you can play on it. Yeah, I think Warcry um, in particular, um, some of the mechanics that you want to show is the maneuverability are on terrain, and so even if it's one, uh, you know, one platform in the middle of the board, or off, you know, two of them that are even the place, it doesn't have to be a ton of terrain. I don't think. I don't think it has to be, you know, um, a full board, you know, uh, or full, you know, heart of Gur set. I think it can be a couple pieces of of terrain. And there's quite a few cards from the battle, you know, when you flip cards where it's sparse. So it's all right to have some open fields and, and then a couple pieces of terrain to stand on. Um, uh, and, and if you can have them painted, yeah, it's a beautiful game. So the terrain kind of makes that. How, yeah. What are your thoughts on terrain, Josh? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I think if you have it painted, it, then it's eye-catching. It draws people in. It gets them kind of involved in the narrative right away. <clears throat> I think that certainly helps a lot. Um, obviously, you're going to want tape measure, dice, you know, the basics, <laughs> cards, or at least some way to look at the profile so you can teach them about, okay, this is what this means, and uh, these are what the abilities are, and, you know, you may not delve into reactions right away, but you might say, oh, you know, by the way, your character can do this uh, is, is, a, is a reaction. Um, but I, I definitely think having painted models, painted terrain helps a lot. Um, you know, I don't you know, have tons of painted war bands, but as, yeah, as you mentioned helps. you mentioned the cards, and I think you know all the bespoke war bands have cards. Um, you know, the older ones are are the previous uh, war bands from season or from you know uh, back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, their cards are a little out of date with new you know updates and points and all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. um, that that's a really good point too because you can have all the rules right in front of you and that makes it really easy for doing a demo yep. if you were um and maybe we can move that to like kind of what what factions make a good or which war bands make a good demo war band and the compendium I'm, i go back and forth because the compendium can be a, a little bit you know difficult to open up and try and like hey i'm gonna look over here and look over here and you're trying to find the profile over a couple of pages so on one hand, a bespoke warband that has the cards looks really great. It's easy to look up. It's fun. The other is I like sometimes telling people to bring their favorite models. Uh, and so those might be compendium models. Those might be in the, you know, sure, and sure. so, yeah. so the, that balance between if, if they don't have models, you know, maybe go with a bespoke warband. But if they have, uh, you know, if they've been playing Age of Sigmar and they have some models that they love, see what they have and maybe put together a list from the compendium for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, then that might be a, a reason to use the compendium if it kind of helps draw them in using models that they've already painted or already built or already play with. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I, I think when it comes to factions and what models to have and what models to have ready, you want to have a clearly aesthetically good guy and a clearly aesthetically mm. bad guy. If they're brand new to the setting, and the reason for it is because somebody will look at corn berserkers and go, those are mine. They've got to kill these guys that are all too pretty. Uh, or they'll be like, yeah, heroes in gold, stamp, stamp, let's go kill some corn bloodbound. Um, and it varies, too, based on what level the player is, right? If I'm teaching somebody that's played Age of Sigmar or Warhammer 40,000, if they want to sit down and play this game with me, hey, these are the war bands I have. Here are some pictures is usually what I'll do and show my phone. Um, and these are some of the stuff we have. I, we can play any of these if you want to play a full game. But if you just kind of want to see what it's like, we can sit down and do that with five models and I'll just give you different rules and we'll just we'll just play a very even and, and balanced goofy game and we'll have some fun. Yeah. Right. Um, right? And it's when when you run demos all the time for those systems one of the big things like four to five units four to five models you don't want to bury them in 12 profiles right spam 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 everywhere right mm -hmm. um yeah. 
it doesn't matter that we know that this is a primaris intercessor and that uh, primaris intercessor has a uh, sergeant has a power fist and uh, those ones have a grapnel launcher, da, 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 and so on and so forth. If I have a double, does my Corvus Cabal guy get to move over everything or just some things? Um, is it dangerous terrain if he can fly over it? Uh, you know, all this stuff, right? Um, yeah. Kenny Wall run over catacombs. Uh, <laughs> so you don't want to bog them down with that. So keeping it very simple, if they're a very new player, uh, if there's somebody that is like, I am here, I have my models I've built and I've painted. If I'm like, okay, so here's five of those models we're going to play with, and I'm going to teach you kind of how dice work um, and sort of how the terrain works. Like that that person isn't going to get the same experience as what they're looking for. So making sure that you're very clear with who you're giving a demo to, what you're looking for them to do or what they're looking to get from you, right? Yeah, um, sure. If it's a, hey, I've, I've been playing, you know, uh, Age of Sigmar for four years and my friend Vin won't stop talking about catacombs at work. Yeah. And so I want to, I want to bring in models. Could you show me how to do it? Um, and having somebody else show. So then when he comes and beats Vint at his workplace. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> so they have a better understanding. So it's, it's just, I think it's, it needs to be tailored. Um, sure. But one yeah. of the things is if they're brand new and haven't played anything and you're going to introduce them to Warcry specific, Having just a very few, even if we know they're different, if they look cool and look the same, it might be it's just a leader and five fighters, and this one can throw rocks. Um, and there are ways you could set it up where, like, you could pick who would win, right? Like, literally at the beginning, this person goes first, that person wins, or this person goes first, that person wins, if the dice roll anything close to average. Um, but everybody gets to kill something. Everybody gets to have some fun, right? Right. Um, well, I've also if, done those games too, where you sit down to do a demo and the, the person across the table kills all your stuff. I, I didn't even have a chance to fight back. I didn't kill anything. Right. And that's no fun too. So, you know, the, the model where there's only five and they're all kind of the same, you'll have equal opportunity to kill each other. Yeah. Um, well, let me, let me take a step back because I think in back in the objective of the demo, um, maybe you should clarify what the objective is not. Um, as the person running the demo, the objective is absolutely not to win the game, right? Because uh, you right. have you have nothing to prove to them, and they shouldn't have to prove anything to you because you're not uh, you you don't probably don't know any you may not know each other well. Uh, they may be encountering a brand new social experience, uh, you know, with your in your part of the group, and there doesn't need to be like a, a you're not hazing anybody or having to prove uh, that they can step up. <laughs> Uh, and be a part of your crew, um, you know, you you should not be winning. You should be, and and that's not to say that um, they should f feel like they won, or you know, what I mean, like in the sense of like that you were playing, everybody was playing hard, and and you know they came out on top. They must be a a wunderkin, you know, or something <laughs> like that. Like we're not trying to lie to anybody, but you're you're setting this up for them to experience a bunch of things you've already experienced it you don't you don't need to experience your abilities you don't need to experience your you know big combo you know quad rampage you know eight horn helm like you don't need to <laughs> you don't need to prove anything in this you need to give them opportunities to to do cool things yeah. uh, to see all the all all the things that you feel when you play well let them experience that in that demo game so just wanted to take that step back and be very clear. Yeah. The objective of this demo is not for you to add a notch on your belt. Yeah, it should be yeah. very interactive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you know, I like what you said, Vin, about very you know, just bring a few models because it's easy. You know, if you've got a handful of models, uh, you know, and, and some war bands are a little. I like in that regard. If you're playing at a thousand point, make them more elite models. Usually more elite models at a thousand are big punchy models, and that can be fun. If everyone's got some punchy stuff, right? That can uh, dish out some hurt. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I th otherwise play it. Yeah, play at a lower model count. You know, lower points uh, count, five hundred, seven fifty, something like that, and mm -hmm. and keep it because here's the thing: is if you can get through the, it's about repetitions. I often find that people by the third battle round start 
be feeling like they can make their own decisions or they can start like piloting with confidence. And if you've got just a few, a handful of models, I think that goes faster and the whole game gets done a little bit quicker and then they ready to re-rack or, you know, put the models down again. And if you can get them to that second game, if they want to play again, I think that that's the win. If you, if you play your first game with thousand points, it's going to take you two hours and that's long uh, for your first time. Right. So I like that idea of, of keeping it small and, and uh, you know, making it very simple to go through quickly. <laughs> um, that's a lot of, you know, the physical things you need a couple of war bands, provide them for them, or if they bring their own, help them make one, you know, I'll often ask ahead of time, what models do you have? And I'll come up with a list for them. Nobody cares. Nobody's in a list building, you know, bonanza. Again, you're not proving anything. You're trying to make a new friend. Gosh, darn it. Uh, uh, and so um, just make it as easy as possible. There are rules. Here's another thing. Uh, you're trying to teach them the game, but you're not. We talked. It's been mentioned a few times. You're not trying to teach them every nook and cranny of Warcry. Uh, because there's there are a few, and I think the sign of a good game is that there's some nooks and crannies and nuance. You're not trying to teach them all the nooks and crannies, so I believe there's rules you should break for the purposes of a demo. Um, uh, and so I'll throw one out there. I think you don't have twists. Don't add twists into the mix. Sure, yep. it's it's a fun thing, but it's even when you've been playing for a long time, sometimes twists can accidentally be ignored so why even put that level of of kind of mental uh load on to, on the game to have a twist that that you might forget or that they have to think of on top of things and that isn't the norm um so i would say don't add twists to the game so that's one rule i would break hmm. vin you break a rule now what rule would you break uh, I would, I would break that rule. No, uh, <laughs> you would have a twist. I would have a twist. Um, the only time I would ever use a twist when I was doing demo games is when somehow the dice have have cheated me of giving them their win, and <laughs> I would get the community that's there involved. I'd be like, "All right, everybody, we need you all to get crazy for Sigmar on three, and then he gets to reroll these dice because they've got them." <laughs> <laughs> and that was the only twist I'd ever have, or, you know, uh, wow, or whatever it would be, right? Um, but no, I think you're absolutely right on the twist. I wouldn't use twists. Anything that complicates the game makes it difficult uh, to play. Um, anything that does addition. So, like, for this double, you can add two to their strength and three to their movement and one and a half times their... Um, Toughness stat uh, upside down if they hang from a hang glider. Like that is just going to slow down game, right? Because now I have to do math. Uh, they want to be able to pick up the dice and throw them and be like, oh, something died. <laughs> Look, something <laughs> happened, right? It's very much, you know, they want to do it over and over again. I'm a terrible bowler, but when I go bowling, the worst part of it is when I'm waiting for my ball for like three, it feels like three years, and then it gets back <laughs> in my hand. I'm like, I still don't know what I'm doing, but there it goes. <laughs> Make the noises, hit the pins, right? Um, so keep them rolling dice, and that means no addition. Um, so if there's, unless there's something they specifically wanted to learn about a war band, which is more of a coaching game and less of a demo, um, no addition. So uh, does that does that mean that like abilities that you might pull abilities and not worry about those uh, first? Yeah, time it might just be the universal abilities the first time. Okay. Yeah. One inch to your movements, not so scary. One additional attacks, not so scary. But when I'm adding two to the strength of my fighter, like the night one of the night hot ones, you're adding two to the strength of the attack and one to yeah. the damage. That's complicated. They, I've lost them before I even hit plus. I said you add two and they shut down. You see the glassy eyes. It's over, son. You've already lost. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, like, keeping it plus one, maybe right. Yeah. Uh, so universal abilities is a great thing to think yeah. about because that's something that they get need to get to know anyway like that right everybody has right. access to those um yeah and who knows if they'll play their that given war band next time i think what you said is correct like where wherever you can give them the rule like the that the norm like what's what's always at play not the things that are unique to a given mm -hmm. war band maybe 
um, mm -hmm. with within reason because you got flavor and stuff. Um, because I was thinking, uh, because yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking like things like you know, we play narrative, uh, which often there's artifacts and here are heroic traits and stuff like that. And I would, I wouldn't introduce that the first time, right, uh, for right. demos and stuff, right, and really, you know, just make sure that there's a good foundation of playing the game regular before adding an aftermath. However, I mean, like, but we've had some people that wanted to join for narrative and they learned aftermath pretty quickly after that. Yeah, but I mean, you, you show them the hook, but you don't have to, you, you don't have to use it right away. Yep, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Any other rules to break? Yeah. And like I said earlier, you know, I wouldn't necessarily, with, with the new edition of Warcry, I wouldn't necessarily include reactions right away either, you know, because mm. again, um, unless one. it came up at a pivotal moment in the game where it's like, oh, hey, by the way, there's also reactions. And if you did this, this, you know, if it, if it makes it cinematic or interesting and, and it provides a good teaching moment, then I might throw it in. But otherwise, I'd probably leave it out, get used to the universal abilities, get used to the normal mechanics, then throw in uh, the, okay, now there's even more interplay before we go forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great one. That is a really great one. Um, so really, I mean, and, and some of it, one of the good things, um, I mean, Crypt of Blood does this in their booklet they sort of run you one mechanic at a time and i don't i don't know if i need I've, I've ever felt like anybody had to go that slow in a game that we've played like they've had to like trickle out some stuff but there is certainly like we've i what they've identified something we've identified is that you there are some things that maybe you do not bring in the first time around i don't know how i'd get away from like initiative dice are sort of so one of the things i do do is sort of like talk through all right, we roll a dice. We each roll a dice to see who's attacker or defender. We then, uh, once we decide, we deploy our our you know um, our battle groups, hammer, dagger, mm -hmm. and shield. Then uh, we um, roll our initiative dice to see you know like go through the steps. Those yeah. always steps because that was that was early on. Like, okay, which order do we do this in? So right. I think. I think I like to ingrain some of that ritual of the game into it where I'm like, and, and that initiative dice roll is such a big part of this game um, yeah. that, that rolling six dice and seeing how many, you know, like those things are really important. And so I always try and go, okay, we do this and then we do this and then we do this so that they start feeling comfortable quickly with that order of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other any other do's or don'ts in terms um, of equipment or rules? Yeah, I think for do's, get... yeah. um, encourage cinematic opportunities. You know, like if there's a moment in the game where you're like, hey, you know what? You could climb up and then jump over and then attack that guy. Go for it. You know, I think highlighting some yes. of the unique mechanics of the game makes it really fun and interesting. Yeah. Well, Just... and I, I, I think to, to the opposite, like similar to what we were talking about when saying you're not trying to win, like you're you should be actively pointing out ways for them to succeed and yep. use their abilities or use rules. Right. Absolutely. Right. Uh, I think one of the big things is don't miss narrative opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. You rolled your dice. This guy dies. Who cares? Um, right. That's, that's what separates like the memorable from the immemorable demo. Well, and all my tanks died and all your tanks died. I don't know what happened. I just rolled some dice and now they're gone. Um, but in Warhammer, we do this for the, the imagery. We do this for the game. We do this for all the reasons. Um, but even the mo some of the most competitive players in America will tell you, like, dude, I just cut off this Mutalist Vortex Beast head the other day. And <laughs> I, got, I got that call the other day. It was super funny because that's just that was what happened. They're like, in their head, this is what happened. And it was They're so like, cool. Vint like Zinch. I'm going to tell him that I killed Zinch. <laughs> <laughs> I put a Gene Steeler called Sword right through his brain. <laughs> um so right like you know and ramp up the action if you're the one giving the demo ramp it up like sure my um my jade obelisk uh one of the archers shoots in he's a defacer or the defacers of the hammers guy shoots in and kills one of my carrick acolytes all right that carrick acolytes down he took an arrow to the knee and his adventuring days are over like it's kind of funny you laugh a little bit but by the time we get to you know, a heart seeker versus a uh, magister of Zeech on disc and the heart seeker from um, 
your untamed beast just like wrecks him. He comes in with his axe and he puts it into his chest and pulls him off of his disc and says, not today. You've never been above me and takes his head. Um, you know, <laughs> then you're, then you're jazz. I don't even know what's going on, but my guy just took his head off. Cause I rolled so <laughs> nice. I want to do that again. Right? Um, and then you're back for your second game. Right. Um, yeah. People you know, are going to win. And if that's what they're after, they're going to enjoy the winning part. But if they want to enjoy the game and the difference in the game, they're going to enjoy that too. And you want to give them that option with the narrative spin and play on the words because that initial imagery is going to set the setting for their games for the rest of their 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 gaming life. Um, yeah, and we you know we talk about you know within our gaming group and even fr from this you know this position we are broadcasting out to everybody listening, like we promote a certain way of playing and building community that we enjoy uh so if there if you enjoy narrative if you enjoy you know those sorts of things then you should promote that as well and even if like vince said even if you're competitive you know there's a reason we paint with uh, miniatures that have faces and you know little unique weapons and lore and stuff like that because it's more interesting than playing with chess pieces um you know like so get into it a little bit and and make it something that even in competitive that people are kind of giving characters names or you know talking about how they will uh come back and haunt them for the rest of their life if because of <laughs> that that you know lucky six right. so make grudges you know, yeah make grudges <laughs> yeah make grudges with the models not exactly with the, people. With the models with the models yeah of course <laughs> um well, so then let's, you know, we've talked about uh, this before then too, like how it can be easy to set this sort of st stuff up. What are some other things that are going to set people up su for success? For instance, what types of games would you recommend playing? Do you have any off the top of your heads or written down in the show notes that uh, you would be interested in people playing to, that, that you've run good games? And if you've got some that you've played that are sort of like just thrown together, they're not a particular mission, that's fine too. Um, what are some some games or scenarios that, that you guys enjoy playing for demos? Uh, usually when I was running demos, I would either set up both warbands so they wouldn't have to worry about deployment because it feels bad when you're like, well, I put them where I thought they looked cool and now it took me three turns to find you. Um, you set them up where they look cool and then the mission is usually kill everybody to the last. It in, encourages that you are going to interact with each other. Um, they they will have to fight you, and you will have to fight them. And you'll figure out if you can get three guys on one guy, that one guy is probably dead. Or even if I'm one big stumpy gor gorger, I'm going to get involved in a bunch of dogs, and the dogs will tear me down. Um, so just, just some of the fun options through those. Um, to make it very simple, right? There's not, I don't have to worry about, okay, how many inches do I have to be from this objective again? And like, how do I carry a treasure? I just have to punch you harder than you punch me. And then I win. Yes. Yeah. Simple, <laughs> straightforward, easy to remember. Yeah. Right. I often move away from the fighting ones because I don't, well, and if you're in charge of the two war bands that are going to play and you can set all that up to where they're, you know, fairly equal in terms of combat. Uh, I tend to, stray away from it because i don't always know who's going to be um good at you know like i don't always what they're going to bring and whether or not fighting is going to be the optimal for their list um so i often play and you've heard everybody's heard me talk about this before higher ground is my favorite scenario to play because it's interactive with the terrain you're you know there's going to be some fighting if you're going to try and take somebody out and you can always encourage like oh i left this guy out here he'd probably go over and hit him um but the objective is to to get up higher and so movement is is kind of the name of the game and if you don't kill anybody that's fine like uh you know you if you can learn to run away and and uh navigate stuff so that's one of my favorites um uh, primarily because it doesn't require fighting even though yeah more cry we like to fight stuff so there's gonna be some fighting mm -hmm. I think high ground also uh, it highlights the mobility, the climbing, the jumping, the you know, so yep. that kind of adds that element in as well. Yeah, another one. It's not always the. It's this one can often be uh, lopsided. The the breakthroughs where you have to get some models across, you know, off the table edge. Um, but 
it's often a very like low bar to win. Like you just need to get one model or two models off, you know, like a messenger has to, like you can play real narrative with it. Um, and it, it's also just movement and you just, you don't necessarily have to kill anything, but you have to not die, which can be another thing that makes, I think war cry different than other games where the, the scenarios can be very, um, uh, asymmetrical. And I, mm -hmm. I find that very interesting about Warcry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I like that aspect very well. Yeah. What do you guys think about objective missions or treasure missions? Are those good for a first game or are those more Yeah, common? so I was going to say, uh, I think treasure missions could be a little complicated for a first game just because there's the slows your movement. You can't fly, you can't disengage, you can't, you know. So, yeah. But I, I do think objective missions would work like, well. Why am, especially... why am I even holding this cool treasure if it's going to make me dumb? Right, right. Well, that, that's why we got to make the tokens, and then people will know why they're holding the treasure. They go, <laughs> "Oh, this is why." Yeah, shiny. But, but uh, I think objective missions, um, you know, especially if it's uh, if you got three, or you know, then then it encourages models to come together or tactically jump on it at the last minute, so there's more strategic play. But you don't necessarily have to fight, but it, uh, you would likely have to fight a little bit. So mm -hmm. you kind of get a little all those sorts of aspects in terms of being defensive as well as offensive and. And learning the different mechanics. Yeah. Cool. Anything else in terms of uh, types of games or um, anything else that you would do to set it up or make sure it's a success? No, I think like Vince said, you, you kind of talk with the person, get an idea of you know what their background is, what they're kind of looking for, and yeah. tailor the experience. I think that's you know the best way to make it the best encounter for them. Yeah. I think one of the other things in the, the stuff, and I forgot this one, is the wound chart. Hmm? If your strength is this, you wound on this. Hmm. Strength is this, you wound on this. Greater than, less than, equal to. It seems really, really crazy, but anytime I've tried to explain it, it seems like I'm talking Greek and I watch them just get overwhelmed, or I hand them the thing, the little card that has it on there, and they're like, super easy, I got it, figured it hmm. out. So just having that little card. So um, strength versus toughness cheat sheet. Yep. yep. It's reminder. going to save you infinite headaches. Okay. And, and like, you've taught a lot of 40K. I have. We actually did a, we did, I did a talk with uh, the team about it when 10th edition launched. I was like, look, there's going to be new people out there. Our job is to come out and be like, you know, scions of this hobby and not be bullies. So like when we're teaching new people, make sure that we're doing these things. And I had this big, like, yeah. and I got like a couple thumbs ups and a lot of like, oh, I'm sure. But <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, actually the team's doing great and the teams yeah. are great. They're just yeah. wonderful people, but uh, right. it's, it's right. a very big yeah. thing. Right. And actually it's really cool. Cause in, when I ask around in places that I'm not actually participating in, in said circles, the, the feedback I get, is from the people that I know, uh, be they Age of Sigmar or Warhammer 40k, or I mean, Warcry is easy because all of us are pretty awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really you guys, <laughs> the like, best, you guys are great. Uh, our community <laughs> here is amazing. Um, but you go to Milwaukee and you go, Hey, I want to learn a 40k game, there'll be somebody there that'll be like, Okay, cool, uh, give me a sec, I'm gonna tailor my list down and we'll play. Um, and they they're fun. Like the, the the people around, like the hobby is in a great state all across all the game systems, right? You listen to what the hex and they talk about the community being awesome and how cool it was to go to Nova and meet all these different people and have fun. So it's just it, it's it the state of the game is good. So there's no reason to make the person who's new to it think it's anything other than that. Yeah. Um, Fair. Yeah. Yeah. So so if We've talked about a number of things. We've talked about the objectives, the what you need to have on the table, how to kind of size up the lists or prep some lists, rules to to jettison for the first one, even though Jets. you might be like, I, this is one of the rules. I got to keep it. Like get rid of it for the purposes of demos. Some some types of games to play or, or scenarios, et cetera. I like what you said. Like set up the, the board, set up the uh, models, uh, you know, pick a a um, a battle or a victory condition. Ditch the the twist. Like, don't worry about all the setup stuff. Like, just get them into the game. Another great reason. Um, so you know, of all the things, 
what would you say if the, you if if you could give them just one of these things to say do this improve this thing right here and and you're on your way to better demo what what would you pick out which would you highlight josh uh, i'd say laugh often mm. have a good time you know enjoy the moments you know the dice are gonna treat each person differently and you gotta roll with it and have a great time and go whoa that was awesome crazy man you just did three crit rolls or whatever you know it's just laugh often yeah how about you vent i mean i was gonna say something similar with the energy you bring right mm -hmm. um bring that good energy bring that excitement uh, but Josh kind of said that. So I would say um, make sure you have it organized. Make sure you have the play area so it doesn't look like you just like dropped the models and they're like all standing up and they look nice. Like have have the demo table be welcoming and, and like it's Thanksgiving dinner and they just walked into their their Nana's house, right? Like um, have it have it be warm and welcoming. Make sure the, the table's in order. Nice. And everything's there. Wonderful. I agree with both of those. So just to add something different, I'll say um, uh, set them up to succeed uh, in making decisions in the game uh, through helping them look through the rules, helping them make this, you know, see what options are available, uh, show them where those cool opportunities are to take out one of your models or, you know, run up on an objective or jump and leap and be cinematic and, uh, you know, be a, be a great guide uh, through the game. Uh, so we've got uh, laugh a lot, have fun, you know, be that, be the, the energy that you, you want see. them. Yeah. You want to see in the game, <laughs> uh, be organized, set it up, take responsibility for kind of uh, setting the stage and the environment for it. And then be the guide, run them through, make sure they're successful uh, and they can uh, kind of pick it up quickly. And then all those other things, the, the sprinkles on top or the make it quick, make it narrative, make it, um, uh, you know, easy, stress-free, memorable, memorable yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, if you, like I said, uh, if you have anything you would add, listener, uh, to this, uh, this list, things that have worked for you or things that uh, were the opposite, were like nightmares for you when somebody did this, please share them with us. Uh, we'd love to hear those and we can... Uh, commiserate with you and we can warn people about them the next time we, we talk about this, uh, no. add it to our repertoire. So we don't do any of that. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for uh, you guys for, uh, uh, I know we kind of, again, touched on the building community, but this one is such a, a big one, I feel like, mm -hmm. because it's, yeah. it's a lot of people's first touch point. And when you're growing community or just trying to make a friend or start something like these demo games are really important to, fostering that that foundation or and growing um the communities that we're that we're in so yeah definitely um awesome anything else you guys want to wax poetic on uh before uh vint kicks us out of here no i think we touched everything that i'm keen to cover yeah all right. good all right go for it all right. So uh, if you're looking to find us, uh, you can find us on the Discord, the mortalrealms.com slash Discord. Uh, you can find me on the Dogs of War. Uh, I think it's D-O-W-Vint on Twitter. Um, or X or whatever. It yes. <laughs> it's X, but then it's like Twitter notification. So I'm not really sure. It's it's one of those. Right. You can find me on that thing. <laughs> Yep, but uh, I'm mainly on the Discord, uh, always watching. And also checking the dogs for Warcry at gmail.com. Uh, and you can find uh, me uh, not on X really at all. So just on the Discord as Eric or Stone Monk Gamer. Uh, come join us for hobby and uh, gameplay stories and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, and until mm -hmm. next time, see ya. Yeah, Bye. have fun. Good luck. <laughs> Demo well.